General, Twitty, I want to talk to you about the current operations. White House spokesman said this counter-offensive, uh, offensive. Uh, John Kirby said, this is a major offensive effort, but the idea of being on the offense is not new to Ukrainians. Well, that's certainly not true. Uh, I mean, it, it, is, it is true, I should say, that they have been on the offensive in the last couple of weeks. In the larger context, though, of the six-month war, how significant do you think this counter-offensive is? Well, Andrea, thanks for uh, letting me be on your show again. A couple of points I want to make. It's pretty interesting that the Ukrainians would announce that they're going on an offense or a counteroffense. Most of the time, you want the element of surprise. You want to be able to catch the enemy on his heels, and then you strike him hard in some type of counteroffense or, or attack. This did not happen. They announced it, and I think they announced it for two reasons. Number one, as you know, the Russians have been applying a lot of pressure there in the east in the Donbass area, making small gains, not much of gains, but small gains. So this will allow some of the forces, Russian forces, to move from the Donbass to reinforce Kassan. So I think that was what the Ukrainians intended to happen. It sort of puts the Russians on a two-front war, if you will. The other reason is we know that there is low morale in the Russian uh, armed forces. By announcing this, it's sort of like a psychological warfare. It tells the Russian soldiers, hey, you stay there if you want. We're coming to get you. And so uh, to answer your overall question, this is pretty significant. The Russians have had Kassan since the beginning of this war, the 24th of February. This is not going to be a large-scale offense like you're used to seeing, like in the American Army. The, the Ukrainians have had success by small-scale battles and striking at key critical areas, such as bridges, the Dnipro River, where reinforcements can come from the Russians. Strike those. Logistical areas, the command and control areas. The artillery, that's how they're going to make success, success. And oh, by the way, if they continue to do those smart things, like striking deep in the Crimea, or also over the border into Russia, they can really put the Russians on their heels. Well, what is your sense of, the, the, of Russia's current military capacity now? Uh, are those reports yeah, so that they're having trouble recruiting uh, accurate? Yeah, the assessment is that the Russians have lost somewhere between 80,000 soldiers either killed or, or wounded. And as you know, uh, President Putin has been on this huge recruiting effort. He's trying to recruit 137,000. In addition to that, he just formed this new corps called Three Corps Army Corps, where he's trying to get uh, uh, civilians to come and join that and put them in the fight. They're going to be woefully untrained going into fight. They're going to be similar to the conscripts that you saw earlier on in the war. A lack of training, lack of motivation, indiscipline once he puts those into the fight. So I think that uh, the Russians will continue to struggle with meeting their recruitment goals for this fight. And you will continue have to have this fight of attrition that's going to go on for years, in my view as a result of them not being able to amass the necessary combat power needed to destroy the Ukrainian forces. And, of course, the question then becomes, is Europe going to stand with Ukraine and have the patience, uh, despite the economic pressures, the approaching winter, the energy shortages?